Let's uh, consider the following uh, optimization problem. We have a monopoly. A monopoly in economics is a single seller of a good, only one seller. So the monopoly has the power to set the price at whatever level he or she likes. Then consumers will decide then how much to buy. In this example, let's assume that the monopolist has uh, this sort of domain curve or inverse domain curve. <clears throat> and uh, the monopolist has this cost function. How will this monopolist um, decide to set price and output? OK, uh, let's do it more formally using a mathematical approach that we're familiar with. All right, this is what kind of a problem? What do we assume that the monopolist's goal is? Maximize profit. Therefore, what kind of problem is this? An optimization problem. And when you have an optimization problem, what's your first step in solving the optimization problem? Find the objective function. Okay. Now, what did you assume the monopolist wants to do? Maximize profit. Therefore, that suggests that our objective function is going to be a, a what? What will the objective function be? Okay, now, you, now you're jumping ahead. We're, we're still on the objective function. That's a, we'll get to that. And, that. and that's good. We're going to show how the, the, our approach is consistent with that. What you learned in 301 was correct. Okay, but it's just a different method we're using here. What did somebody say? What did, what is our objective function going to be in this example? Well, it's going to be what kind of a function? Profit. The monopolist is trying to maximize profit. So our objective function is going to be to figure out what the profit function is. Let pi denote profit. And by definition, profit is what? By definition, profit of a firm is revenue minus cost. Okay. Let R be revenue and C be cost, and it's R minus C. Okay. Uh, now, Let's talk about this revenue function. What is revenue? Let's break down the revenue function. Yes, revenue is price times quantity. Right now, we don't want to leave our revenue function like that because expressed this way, revenue is a function of two variables, P and Q. But we can simplify this by doing what? Exactly. And then after we do that, Ben, uh, revenue will be expressed in terms of quantity, a single variable. If we can get revenue expressed in terms of a single variable, hopefully the vari same variable that cost is expressed in terms of, then that'll make our problem much easier. All right, so let's do what Ben and Helen were suggesting. Substitute in for P, 100 minus Q times Q, and now revenue is just 100Q minus Q squared. Okay. Now we've got revenue expressed in terms of Q alone. Cost is already expressed in terms of Q alone. 
So now it's easy to write profit as a function of q alone. Pi of q is just r of q, which is this, minus c of q. c expressed as a function of quantity. Just substitute in for that. We'll put that in brackets. Here's our cost. And simplifying this expression, notice we have 100q here minus a 10q. So that'll give us a 90q. Okay. Uh, we just have a minus q squared. We'll have to carry that along. And then we have a minus 500. That's as simple as we can make it. That is our objective function. So that's step one, find the objective function. Oftentimes, in word problems, this will be the most challenging part, is finding the objective function. Once you've found the objective function, then what is uh, step two? Here is step one. Once we've done this, we found our objective function, then what's the next step? Right, Heather. Find uh, the first order condition. And w tell us what the first order condition will be. Uh, what is the first order condition here? Right. OK, find the first derivative of the objective function and do what with it? Exactly, set it equal to 0. That's the first order condition. So pi prime of q, that's step 2. And Heather, what is pi prime of q? Exactly. And as you said, we set that equal to 0. That's step 2. That's the first order condition. And then, oh, I, what, and then what do we do next after we set that equal to 0? Helen, what would we do next uh, after we set pi prime of q equal to 0? Solve for q, right. And uh, doing so, we get 90 equals 2q. Divide both sides by 2, and we get q sub 0. Our critical value of q is equal to 45. Okay. So that's really all part of step two, finding the critical value of q where the first derivative is 0. In this problem, there's only one value of q where the first derivative is 0. Okay. Uh, all right. What's step three? William, what will step three be? Right. And uh, take the second derivative. And in this case, William, what is the second derivative? <clears throat> what would the second derivative be in this case? The second derivative of the objective function. Right, negative 2. You just go to this first derivative, 90 minus 2q. Differentiate that one more time, William, and we just get minus 2. OK, good, great. Uh, my hearing is not great. So sometimes I might not hear you, even though you said it. So OK, very good, William. So, William, what does this mean then? <clears throat> okay, we're, we've gone through all the steps, but now here, here's where you have to 
figure out what we have here. So you're not sure, William? Okay. All right. When you find a critical value and you find that the second derivative is negative at that critical value, that guarantees you have a maximum at that value of Q, which is what we wanted to do. We wanted to maximize profit. And what this negative second derivative is telling us is that uh, <coughs> profits are going to be a relative maximum at Q equals 45. Because you, from the first order condition, we got pi prime of 45 equals 0. And pi double prime evaluated at 45 is less than 0. These two things together mean that pi evaluated at 45 is a relative maximum. A negative second derivative at the critical value guarantees a relative maximum. Had we found that the second derivative was positive, that would have guaranteed a relative minimum. But in this case, it's negative. So we have a relative maximum at pi equals 45. And uh, if we go back and calculate what pi equals at 45 is, we do the following. Pi of 45 go back here, 90 times 45 minus, we're going back to the objective function here, minus 45 squared minus 500 and we do this arithmetic, uh, what you end up with is uh, the maximum profit is uh, 1,525. And that is your uh, maximum profit. Okay. Let's look at the graph of this. Very good suggestion, Ben. Uh, you anticipated me. Here is output. Here is profit. Notice, here's our objective function gives the value of profit for different values of Q. Notice it has an intercept of minus 500. It's a quadratic. The coefficient on Q squared is negative, so it's going to be upside down U. So we know what its shape looks like. It looks like this. At Q equals 0, profit is minus 500. That makes sense, because if Q is 0, you have no revenue but you have this fixed cost of 500. Your cost would be 500 at output of zero. So that's where it starts. And it comes up like this. Peaks and then come, comes back down. And the top of this profit hill is where Q equals 45. The slope of that profit hill is zero. That's your first stored condition. Okay. And the top of this profit hill, 1525. That's the most profit you can get. In this case, not only is this a, a relative profit maximum, it's also a global profit maximum. Okay. But this part right here just guarantees a relative maximum. But in this case, it turns out to be both, a relative and a global maximum. Okay. Notice the negative second derivative guarantees that our function has this shape, that it's concave downwards in this region here. That is, if you pick a point to the left of 45, you can see the profit would be the slope would be positive. 
at q equals 45, the slope is zero. At q equals, say, 46, the slope is negative. So the rate of change of the slope is negative. The slope is going positive, zero, negative. That's a negative rate of change. And that's what guarantees the maximum. Okay. All right. Does it make sense? It's really pretty straightforward. Just follow the three steps. First, find the objective function if you have to. Sometimes it's given to you. But if it's not given to you, you have to figure out what the objective function is. Once you got that, then the rest is easy. Check the first order condition, check the second order condition, and you, you find a, either a maximum or a minimum, hopefully. Okay.